But let's talk about modifications a little bit as sort of an addendum to all that. I don't mind making modifications for drivability, reliability, roadability, whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot of guys in the club do. I, I made the mistake of posting pictures of my engine bay on Facebook and sometimes people ask, oh, is that the original engine? I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's the original engine. That's the one that came with the car. And, guaranteed to get five or six comments from guys in, in, in the know who are like, oh no, I, I see that radiator, that's aftermarket, I see those headers, that's aftermarket, that's not original, that's not factory, blah blah blah, and all that. I, I really think it's kind of unfortunate, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I've got matching serial numbers for crying out loud, this is the engine that came in the car, don't tell me it's not the original engine, uh, let's just get that out of the way, right? So, it is the original engine and the original transmission that came in this car in 1953, and that's what I drive. Have I made some changes to that? Yes. Uh, you can do a lot, I think, to make it easier to drive in all conditions, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not a... this is not a show car. Uh, it's not a trailer queen. I drive this car a lot. Um, just this summer, I did like a 3,000 mile road trip up to Ypsilanti for the uh, HET meet. It's the third time that I've made that trip. Second time? Third time? Made it a lot. Put a lot of miles on this car is what I'm trying to say. I think I put something like 20 to 25,000 miles just since the restoration, just since the rebuild. But uh, it's a lot. It's a big difference. But, that's because I like to drive the car. That's what I do with this car. And I think part of deciding what you want to do with the engine is deciding what you want to do with the car. How are you going to enjoy it? So my enjoyment of this car is driving it. You know, maybe your enjoyment is you want to show it or preserve it. Keep it in its exact original condition, you know. And, uh... Maybe for that reason, you don't want a single nut or bolt out of place. You want everything to look exactly the way it did as after it left the factory. And that's fine. I can appreciate people who do that. Um, maybe you want to hot rod it or race it. That's really cool. I kind of want to do that too. <laughs> Part of me is toying with the idea of building another Hornet just to throw around on some local dirt track or something like that. That's cool. Do what you want to do with your car, right? That's what's important. Uh, and therefore, you gotta do what you wanna do with your engine. Uh, and if that means modifying it, souping it up, hot rodding it, doing what you gotta do, by all means, I think go for it. Uh, it's another way of preserving the old Hudson engines, to me, the flatheads, is doing what you need to do to them to keep them running, right? Drive them, keep them going. Whatever means that might be, I think. But. I like to make some modifications so that I can drive it, street it, you know, and uh, put as many miles on it as I can every year. Just eat up miles in this car. So I address the cooling system. I address the electrical system. You might think that you're a purist and those things don't need to be addressed, but it's hot in Virginia. Let's be honest. You're not moving a whole lot of coolant or, or air, I should say, at idle. Uh, with the stock radiator and fan without a shroud or, or anything like that. So, built a fan shroud, put a big radiator in. I've never overheated. And I've sat in traffic in 90 degree weather with the air conditioning on because I added that because it's hot and I live in Virginia and I just can't live without it. Sue me. <laughs> but that's one of the things that I did, you know, to make this car not get towed, right? not get broken down on the side of the road. The electrical system. I'm not going to drive a car that doesn't charge at idle, right, when I'm sitting at a light. Uh, or the headlights dim uh, when you're sitting at a light because you got an old 6-volt generator or something like that. I'm just not going to do that. Um, I've got a 12-volt negative ground charging system, uh, modern alternator, brand new Optima battery with lots of cold cranking amps. This car starts instantly, uh, even in the coldest 
weather that we get here in Virginia, you know, certainly below freezing temperatures. Uh, and that's important to me, you know, that's, that's a part of the experience. I want to get in and go. I don't winterize the car. We've got mild enough weather here, as long as it's not snowing, I'm going out and I'm going to drive this thing. Um, and I want it to be reliable. I don't want to have a dead battery. Uh, if I'm out on a road trip, I want to be able to go to any old auto parts store and pick up an alternator, uh, pick up a battery if I have to, or get a jump from somebody who's got a modern charging system without having to worry about cooking anything. I can run accessories, right? Like, uh, like the air conditioning system, like I just talked about. That's important to me, running this, this EVAP unit under the dash here. Being able to have a couple of creature comforts like that, that come from having some more charging amps. I can run any accessories I want to. I've got an electric brake, brake booster. That certainly sucks a few amps. Uh, just as I use the brake, that little pump is going, that little motor all the time. And uh, it's important to keep the battery topped off. Motor world. An ocean breeze. That's cool. Looks like a go-kart track. So yeah, modifications like that, whatever I can do to drive this car as much as I want to, which is a lot. And I don't think that it sacrifices originality at all. And you know, I'm a young guy. I like souped up motors. I want a little extra horsepower. I did some speed mods, you know, put a cam in it, put some headers on it. Do little things like that to make it just a little bit sportier to drive make some noise right dual exhaust big muffler that's fun for me um i don't think these cars were necessarily sleepy before but i like making some noise i like bringing out a little bit of that race car for me this this restoration was finding the perfect balance between limousine and race car you know without going full hot rod and i think i achieved that a lot of fun so I guess that's kind of it you know whatever your reason if you've got a cracked block or the body the old rusted hulk you got for your project didn't have a motor in it at all and you kind of had your mind made up about what you were gonna put in it that's fine you know do whatever you got to do uh, you're still preserving Hudson's you're still taking care of them even if you engine swap them but if you got a little flathead under the hood, oh man, if it runs and drives, just enjoy it, I think. Um, that's my opinion. But if you're going to make the swap, more power to you. It's your car. You do what you want to do with it. Please, please, please don't scrap that block. Sell it. Offer it up to the club. Give it to somebody who needs it. Maybe they didn't have one. Maybe theirs cracked. It's important to keep as many of them on the road as we can. So. Be a steward, I think. Uh, even if you're going to swap it, preserve it, give it to someone else. That's my idea. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm going to do, do a little more driving to pick up my friend.